ficando maluco, moleque. Sabe quem eu sou, moleque. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cartels that are still active. There was only one explanation for the flamboyance and the jet. For this list, we'll be looking at the most prolific and powerful drug cartels that are still in operation. Have you heard about any of these organizations? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Oficina de Envigado. In the 1990s, Oficina operated as the enforcement wing of Pablo Escobar's infamous Medellin cartel in Colombia. It was later associated with the paramilitary group, the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia. After Escobar's death and the collapse of the Medellin cartel, Oficina evolved into a drug trafficking organization in its own right. However, a slew of high-profile arrests saw it weakened and broken up into a coalition of smaller organizations. Nowadays, it mostly provides services to other drug traffickers, operating as a sort of mafia federation. Number 9. Jalisco New Generation Cartel A relatively new cartel, the Jalisco New Generation was founded in 2009, but has become notorious for its use of extreme violence. Named after the Mexican state of Jalisco, the semi-militarized group is the country's most dangerous organization. It partakes in trafficking narcotics and stealing crude oil. It's clearly an elite group, with military training at its origin. The group is heavily armed, and even once shot down a military helicopter with an RPG. It's currently led by the most wanted man in Mexico, Namesio Asaguera Cervantes, whose bounty has been set to $10 million by the U.S. authorities. By flooding the U.S. with drugs, agents say he makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year and is responsible for a third of the drugs flooding streets in the U.S. Number 8. Commando Vermelho. Portuguese for Red Command, Commando Vermelho is a Brazilian cartel involved in various forms of trafficking, including drugs and arms. But they also commit more personal crimes, including robberies, loan sharking, and kidnapping. Those who have seen the film City of God may be familiar with Commando Vermelho as it showcases the gang's origins. The group is primarily active in the city of Rio de Janeiro, but its reach extends to nearby countries like Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia. Commando Vermelho has fought fiercely with authorities and in 2010 famously went to battle with the Brazilian army. In 2016, members shot down a police helicopter, killing all four officers on board. Number 7. Cartel of the Sons Cartels often grow powerful thanks to influence with politicians and the military. And that's how Venezuela's Cartel of the Sons was born. The organization began in the mid-1990s, when corrupt members of the Venezuelan military turned a blind eye to drugs coming in from Colombia. This soon evolved into active participation. In fact, the name Cartel of the Sons references the sun-like emblems worn by Venezuelan military generals. It's believed that the cartel flourished under the corrupt rule of Hugo Chavez, and it's alleged that President Nicolas Maduro is also involved. Another man implicated in its operation is Diosdado Cabello, the captain of the Venezuelan armed forces. Number 6. Primero Comando de Capital According to the Brazilian government, Primero Comando de Capital is the biggest and most active criminal organization in the country. Part cartel, part mafia, PCC participates in nearly every aspect of organized crime, including drug trafficking, protection rackets, and robberies. In April of 2017, Primero Comando de Capital executed the largest robbery in Paraguayan history, stealing $8 million and killing one police officer. Armed with military-grade weapons, dozens of robbers fired at the facility. Rocket launchers and explosives were used to blow open the vault. It operates primarily in the state of Sao Paulo and has close alliance with Ndrangheta, one of the most violent and powerful mafias in the world. PCC's leader, a man known as Marcola, is currently serving 234 years in prison and is controlling the cartel from inside its walls. Number 5. The Tijuana Cartel There was once a time when the Tijuana Cartel was the most dangerous group in Mexico. It came to prominence following the arrest of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, who ran the Guadalajara Cartel throughout the 70s and 80s. Felix Gallardo is a very high-functioning psychopath. His story was famously captured in the Netflix drama Narcos Mexico. La familia nos decían, pues sí, éramos poquitos, ¿verdad? Pero ahora con este trato que hice con el gobierno, 
Yo no creo que haya un traficante más poderoso en México. Upon his imprisonment, Gallardo's cartel split up, and his nephews, the Felix brothers, started the Tijuana cartel. The cartel has dwindled in power, as most of the Felix brothers are either dead or imprisoned. But it is still active in Baja California and the southwestern United States, and is currently being run by Eredina Ariano Felix. Number 4. Juarez Cartel Nobody is safe in this city. Like the Jalisco New Generation, the Juarez Cartel is known for its horrific acts of violence, often displayed in public as a form of intimidation. You come anywhere near me, my family, or Ruth again, the next time you see your son, he's gonna be hanging from a bridge in Juarez. You got that? This has made the Juarez Cartel one of the most feared organizations in Mexico, despite its loss in power since the death of leader Amaro Carrillo Fuentes in 1997. It's currently run by Juan Pablo Ledesma, with Mexican authorities offering a bounty of $2.5 million for information leading to his capture. The cartel has a strong presence in the city of Ciudad Juarez. Its close proximity to the border has allowed the organization to spread into the southern United States. Number three. Los Zetas. When it comes to violent drug cartels, it doesn't get much worse than Los Zetas. The Zetas target not just rival gang members, they also murder the most innocent of victims. The founders were deserters from the Mexican army, who worked as enforcers for the Gulf Cartel before forming their own gang in 2010. Aside from drug trafficking, the cartel is behind a slew of violent activities, including assassinations, kidnappings, and arson. Los Zetas have used their resources to control Mexico for years. Recently, they've expanded their reach into the United States. Their control extends through much of Mexico, and they are allied with many influential organizations around the globe, including the aforementioned Ndon Greta and various cartels like Tijuana and Juarez. Los Zetas is heavily involved in Mexico's oil trade and has a hand in the distribution of fentanyl and thus the ongoing opioid crisis. Number two, Gulf Cartel. Over its long history, the Gulf Cartel has built up considerable wealth and power. With the Gulf Cartel, we have these families that are really entrenched in the community. They really are related to many, many people in the community, and that gives them kind of a wide support base. And so it's also hard to really kind of root them out. The cartel was created back in the 1930s by smuggler Juan Nepomuceno Guerra, who transported alcohol across the Mexico-American border during Prohibition. His nephew, Juan Garcia Abrego, eventually took control of the Gulf Cartel and shifted its focus to the trafficking of narcotics. The Gulf Cartel was shifting marijuana, cocaine, and heroin through Texas to across the United States. The Gulf Cartel was onto a good thing, but it was about to get a whole lot better with the North American Free Trade Agreement. Not only has it succeeded wildly in that regard, but it has extended its reach throughout much of the globe. With operations in Asia and Africa, the Gulf Cartel is one of the most prolific and influential criminal organizations in the world. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Sinaloa Cartel The Sinaloa Cartel is the most powerful drug trafficking syndicate in the world. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman led the Sinaloa Cartel from a small trafficking outfit to one of the most profitable crime syndicates in the world. He was extradited to the United States in 2017 and sentenced to life in prison plus 30 years. But the Sinaloa Cartel still dominates the North American drug market. Like the Tijuana and Juarez cartels, Sinaloa was born out of the disintegration of Guadalajara. The organization is heavily involved in the global drug market and is primarily responsible for the distribution of fentanyl throughout the world. Unlike heroin, cocaine, or marijuana, fentanyl doesn't need farmland, or water, or sunshine. It can all be made in an underworld lab like this by a handful of cartel chemists. It is currently being run by Ismael El Mayo Zambada, who has never been arrested and is wanted for $15 million. The current run of the Sinaloa cartel is analogous to the glory days of the Medellin cartel, and that is truly saying something. Many police officers have died fighting the cartels, but the traffickers have co-opted parts of the state. You never know who you're dealing with. For Mexicans, that's another reason the drugs war is so dangerous. 